Hi, I'm Katie Laurel, and you're watching TDC Moncton. Hey, folks, it's Nick and Mitch. <laughs> okay, he's even scaring me. What do you get when you combine the fairy tales and the horror into one movie? Well, definitely not the Brothers Grimm, but definitely Guillermo del Toro's Be Afraid of the Dark. No, don't. Be don't afraid be of afraid dark. of the dark. <sighs> okay, don't be afraid of the dark. See, I can't recall names, you can't recall titles. Yeah. Anyways, the movie itself has Guy Pierce playing the father role, Katie, uh, Holmes. Katie Holmes playing the adoptive mother role, and the little girl that I've seen before in other movies, which I can't put my finger on. Neither can I. I've seen her before, but I can't, I can't say exactly where. Yeah. Now, uh, here's the funny thing Guillermo del Toro did actually use these creatures in one of the Hellboy movies. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Those creatures had wings, they could fly, they were skinnier, had no hair, and their jaws were sideways. Yes, but they were also known as tooth fairies. Yes, so Similar to the creatures that are in here. Same genus, but they're not the same species. Is that what genus means? Oh, never mind. You might have a point, that's the worst problem. Anyways, the movie itself has a plot line of the poor kid being sent from one place to the other, where she's trying to adapt to a new lifestyle. And, uh, well, let's say that the, the father has bigger ambitious roles that put the child aside. And, unfortunately, the, um, the, the things go sideways from that point. It's not for the faint of hearted. The rating in Canada is 14 plus. Yeah, it almost deserves more than a 14 plus rating. I wouldn't go R. No, I mean, neither would I. There's no swearing, there's no nudity. There is some. It's probably 18 plus. Yeah, there is some very graphic violence. There is no nudity. No, there isn't. There's yeah, no, I'd there's love no to swearing. There's I'd no love nudity. to have Katie Holmes fall on her back and her, her tits just pop out, but it doesn't fit. Oh. Tom Cruise will come and hunt him, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, very likely. Um, the And we have to hand it to Katie. The last acting job that I saw her in was the miniseries The Kennedys. and She was good in that. She was good in that, but that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is that sometimes actors, actresses tend to keep an acting role uh, almost deeply embedded in them so that when you see them outside of what you've seen them before, you can't detach your way of thinking from what they were. Yeah, like Sarah Michelle, Michelle Geller playing uh, Buffy. Yeah, there's a... That's one example. Yeah, that's one example. The uh, And here, Katie plays... And then, uh, I think she was an interior designer, right? Yeah. Yeah. She plays an interior designer, and she plays a uh, mother figure quite well. She was a reluctant mother. Yeah, a reluctant mother. Mostly because of Guy. Well, it's because of Guy, and she had issues with her own childhood she hadn't really put behind her. Yeah. So, anyways... The movie is just over two hours running time. I think it is two hours running time because it only started at 6.50. Six, seven. Yeah, no, even, probably less because there was about 15 minutes of trailers. Okay, so just shy of two hours yeah, running time. An hour time. 45 minutes. We'll say that. And uh, it's better than the two movies that we saw this weekend, yes, which were uh, Columbiana and Apollo 18. 18. And trust me, Apollo 18 has nothing horror uh, factor compared to this. No, it doesn't. Plus, it happens on the moon. How many of us are ever gonna fucking go to the moon? Oh no, I'm going to the moon! The rock crabs are gonna eat me! Fuck. And for you folks who haven't seen the movie, well, that's not, re that's not really a spoiler because you have to see the movie to get the spoiler. Anyways, it's not a spoiler. Spoilers don't exist anymore. It's hopefully going to push you to go see the movie or at least rent it when you want to go see it. But yeah. this one, you have to see. Because you get to see great locations, great people, great acting, and great glad, horror. Yeah, I'm glad a company like Miramax made it. Another studio would have probably fucked it up. Yeah, and the fun thing is, is that a bonus to this, Guillermo del Toro does one of the creature's voices. Yes, he wrote it. He does. He didn't write it. it. He wrote it. He, he didn't write it. Somebody else wrote it. Both he and somebody else did the actual script for the movie. Oh, okay. Okay, so he worked in a script, but not exclusively. Exactly. Okay. No, no, he worked on the script, but he worked exclusively on the script. 
the story. This is based off of something. This is based off. Some, this is this is based off something he saw as a kid. No, this is something that he actually wrote, or something he read. No, when he was eight years old, he he saw a TV show. This is based off of, and that's what inspired him to do all the horror films. All the horror films he's done, he's done ever since. You mean the kids' TV show "Don't Be Afraid of the Dark"? Hardly. Or something like that. It, it was a story. But that's about what it. a lot of people might say, folks. Trust me on this. We look it up. It, do, it doesn't go to that, no. because I've seen "Don't Be Afraid of the Dark" and it has nothing compared to this. So, anyways, the movie itself is worth seeing in theaters because you get the shock factor. Oh hell yeah! Or if you're going to rent it, watch it with no lights in the house. None. Or or leave one light on and, and have someone who's already seen the movie knock it over halfway through. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, there goes there goes the electricity bill. Anyways, with that, two thumbs up for me. Oh fuck me too. And two thumbs up for Mitch. Yeah. Absolutely, we will see in the theaters. Well, from both of us. Have a nice one.